Hey everybody, Shane here, Shoebox Legends. Thanks for stopping by today for a video on one of the unique ways that I approach the baseball card collecting hobby. Uh, I'm certainly not alone in this, but um, it's a type or an area within my collection that I haven't really focused too much on when it comes to YouTube, uh, but I do pick these cards up from time to time, and I decided to group together some recent pickups uh, on this front into a single video here uh, on this theme. So, uh, I mentioned this recently in a countdown video that I did on my collection, but the longer that I've been in the hobby as an adult, um, somewhere between 15 and almost 20 years now, the more I gravitate towards items that are unique. And what do I mean by that? I love all cards, so don't get me wrong. Uh, but like the two cards you see on the left here, they're not all that unique. Uh, they're great cards. I love them both. Uh, 1973 Topps Nolan Ryan, his best season ever. And uh, obviously the infamous, you know, Hank Aaron Home Run King card that was issued before he was the Home Run King. Um, I love them both, but they're readily available. You can easily grab a copy for, you know, 100 bucks or less in really nice graded shape or even cheaper than that if you're not really uh, condition sensitive, let's say. Um, what I love or what, what I'm more and more attracted to over time are unique cards like this one here, this 1970 Topps Bob Didier. Now there are, you know, thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of copies of this card that exist out in the wild, so it's not unique at all. But this particular copy is because it's a buyback. It's a Topps Heritage 50th anniversary box topper Buybacks. So this would have come uh, on top of a hobby box of 2019 Topps Heritage. Um, I love that it was pack issued twice, and I love that it differentiates this card versus, you know, the hundreds of thousands of other copies uh, of that card that are out there in the wild. Um, so another way that I enjoy unique cards in this hobby are miscuts and uh, cards that are terribly off-center. Now, this is funny and a little bit ironic because when it comes to vintage baseball cards, normally I'm really into centering, like the two cards you see here in the background, these examples, very well centered. It's really what I look for most. Uh, everyone has those characteristics they chase, uh, whether it's clean surface or sharp corners. For me, it's centering, um, you know, followed by a host of other attributes. However, I can also appreciate on the other end of the spectrum, the complete other end of the spectrum, cards that are so terribly off-centered uh, that they're actually qualified as miscuts. Uh, mistakes that happened in the factory, essentially, over at Tops over the years, um, particularly with vintage cards. This happened quite a bit more, although you do still see, you know, factory errors and printing errors and stuff like that today. Uh, but the cards that we're going to look at are all from uh, the 1980s and older. Um, so let's start with the first batch of these. And uh, this is something I've collected on and off over the years. I just have a small little portion of my collection or wing of my collection, so to speak, uh, that, that has these miscut cards. I know there are others that appreciate them as well, um, but recently I stumbled upon this. Uh, this is a lot of miscut cards from 1986 Tops. Uh, you can see that very recognizable dark black border along the top with the team name. And we start off with this Billy sample here. And you can tell, you know, this was an issue with the cutting in the factory. So when the uncut sheet was being processed and cut apart, the blade should have come down right here where the black meets the white along the top and cut this card. Um, but this was off on its registration or the blades weren't aligned properly. And we get a lot more of the edge of the sheet. So Billy Sample was uh, the card all the way to the left of the sheet at this point. And uh, so we get some of this material that was not meant to be in here. And as a result, we're shorted, you know, the S in Yankees and you know, maybe the right 5 to 10% of the Billy sample card as it should have been. Now, what's cool about this lot, you can run into these all the time, but um, this is a lot of contiguous miscut cards that were all miscut from that same sheet. So next to the Billy sample, I've got the card that has the rest of the Billy sample, as well as uh, the beginning of the Steve Henderson card for the Oakland Athletics. And I just love this. So uh, odds are this one sheet was cut wrong like this. Uh, and these were issued either in the same pack or possibly even a vending box. Uh, I know you would find miscuts uh, in a vending box frequently uh, back in the day. And for those that weren't collectors back then, those were basically just like, you know, four or 500 count boxes of uh, cards direct from tops, uh, direct from the factory that weren't wrapped in any way. Um, so yeah, cool one there. But the trail continues on. So after Steve Henderson, the rest of his card from that miscut sheet blends into this John McNamara. 
manager for the Red Sox, so that's cool. I got a Yankees and Red Sox touch already here. Then from uh, McNamara onward, we have the beginning of Larry Sheets for the Orioles. So I just I just think this is such a cool kind of like piece of uh, baseball history or baseball card history, I should say. Uh, and I love this mistake by Tops. Here's the end of the Larry Sheets, and then we start out uh, Al Pardo's card next to him, his teammate for the Orioles. And then obviously, you know, you get the trend here. There's the rest of Al Pardo alongside Steve Bouchel. Steve Bouchel then goes into Bob Shirley for the Yankees. And I don't have enough space here to lay all these out, but I've done it. It's really cool. You can just lay all these out in a row and just see uh, almost one row of an uncut sheet laid out in front of you. There's the Bob Shirley combined with the Dave Rucker. Almost done here. Dave Rucker goes into Greg Booker for the Padres. And then that ends this little run as Greg Booker then connects to Dan Billardello, I think it is. Although I'm missing, uh, again, the end of his card. So uh, something like, I think that was a 10-card run of uh, contiguous miscuts. And uh, I just love everything about it. I got that recently for about 8 bucks, And I just think they look really, really cool laid out. Um, and a kind of a fun story to tell or show somebody who's, you know, maybe a novice collector or doesn't understand the production process that, uh, that Tops goes through. Uh, the next, uh, I have a couple more to get to here. These next two are a pair, and they're also from the 86 Top set. So check this one out. We have Wade Boggs, or most of it anyway. <laughs> you can see uh, his name is clearly cut off here along the bottom, but we all know who that is. And then, to coincide with that, I've got Mike Schmidt for the Phillies. And as you can obviously plainly see, the Schmidt and the Bog cards went together on the uncut sheet. Whoops. So this was, uh, these two cards were back to back. Whoops, I'm having trouble keeping them together here, but you get the idea. Um, on the sheet, and were separated, and they've uh, lasted together as a pair all these years. And so I bought these together. Uh, very cheap. I think it was something like $5 to get this pair of cards. And you might think that's kind of crazy, and I don't necessarily disagree with you. Uh, ponying up five dollars for these but um, as a fan of miscuts getting two hall of famers on connected miscut cards like this and then even more significantly in 1986 the year that these cards represent wade boggs won the batting title in the american league and mike schmidt won the mvp in the national league so you have two of the premier players of that era and two guys who had you know career years in that particular season linked together on a pair of miscut 1986 Topps cards. So uh, just really, really cool. Love those uh, even as much as or more than that group of 10 that we let off with. And then we're gonna go back to the 1970s for the last two cards. Uh, and it's it's the reason that I chose, or one of them anyways, the reason that I chose to have this Nolan Ryan up in the background. Uh, that is probably my favorite um, vintage Nolan Ryan card. Uh, I, I just love that it represents his best overall season uh, in my estimation, 1973. Great shot of him with the Angels. And so I've looked for ways to collect that card beyond just that base version. And uh, I recently added, I think it was back in, you know, last year, 2023 sometime, I got an autographed version of it, authenticated here, which I really dig. And then uh, you can tell where this is going. Recently on eBay, I tracked down this beauty, a very miscut version of the Nolan Ryan 1973 tops. You can see the upper border of the photo in what would have been the next card down on the sheet is uh, just inching into the bottom of the card there. And then as such, the top of the card is missing the border from Nolan's photograph. Um, so this is, you know, as miscuts go, this one is certainly nowhere near as severe as, you know, the 86 lot that we looked, you know, let off with. Uh, but it's, it's still a pretty miscut card and it's obviously a much more significant player uh, who I collect and enjoy. And uh, it's one of the highlights of my miscut card collection. And then lastly, this one I was really excited to find. This is like, um, I felt like I was adopting um, like a rescue pet from a shelter when I found this card on eBay. I think I described that to a couple hobby buddies this way. Um, but it's the 1974 Tops Hank Aaron new all-time home run king card that's been up this time in the background. And this is one of the most just horrendous versions of this card I've ever seen, but I love it because of that. Look at this card. It is... Uh, 
It's been folded in half at some point, so we have a crease going horizontally right across the middle of the card and across Hank's face. Um, it also looks like it may have been folded vertically at some point as well, so this might have been you know, folded down in fours uh, or in quadrants. Um, aside from that, it is gloriously miscut. Um, there's barely a border down here, but then the border starts as you move along, and then, you know, opposite of that, along the top, we get a bigger border that narrows. So this is, um, op you know, mis miscut or diamond cut in that sense, and it's also miscut just in the fact that, you know, the entire right portion of the card is gone, and instead we have... Uh, what would have been the top of the card next to it on the sheet. Um, the corners are beat. The edges are beat. Uh, I mean, this is just... To me, I, I was fascinated by this card. It's it's like one of the most interesting versions of this card that I've ever seen. Um, and again, you might think I'm crazy for, for buying this. I didn't pay a fortune, but uh, I'll share. You know, I did pay $20 to pick up this card because uh, I just was enamored by it it's it's like a favorite of mine i can't explain it because it goes against like all of the characteristics that i normally look for in uh in vintage baseball but i guess you know quite simply it might just be a you know it's so bad it's good category for me um and then one other cool tidbit about this one um on the back here or uh, on the bottom here you can see there was a st louis cardinals card originally connected to this and thanks to the unique position here uh, first base slash third base on the Cardinals. Um, I was able to narrow down, and a card number starting with the number one, um, I was able to narrow down that the 1974 tops Joe Torre of the Cardinals is the card that would have been here on the left. And uh, Joe Torre is also a Hall of Famer. Uh, so there's a little slice of another Hall of Famer on here uh, to share uh, the real estate with this uh, Hank Aaron all-time home run king. I just... I love the character of this card. Um, I'm pretty certain, just like, you know, with the buybacks, it's probably one of a kind or close to it. And uh, yeah, something off the beaten path and not what I would normally collect at all. But um, it just goes to show you, you know, never say never in the hobby and just have fun. Um, this, this card for $20 brought me so much enjoyment. Um, I don't need to worry about its condition. I can take it out of the case, which I've done plenty of times and handle it and smell it and play with it and uh, I can leave this thing on display in my hobby room and enjoy it without worrying about, you know, sun damage or anything else. And, uh, you know, as as far as entertainment value goes, I think I, I'd be hard-pressed to spend $20 and have more fun uh, in the hobby than this card has provided me. So uh, that's a wrap for today. Thank you for joining me for this uh, miscut, very off-centered episode. Uh, apologies to, to my buddy Dylan. I should have put a trigger warning uh, at the beginning of this that there were some extremely OC cards uh, in today's video, but I enjoyed putting this together. Uh, it's just another fun way to uh, enjoy the hobby without spending a lot of money, and I certainly appreciate you stopping by to check it out. Uh, I'll be back soon with some more content, but until then, enjoy the hobby, everybody. See ya.